And we're back for another quick financial car video. I know you guys love these. I don't know if that's a joke or not because I find them very intriguing and I like passing this information. So if you guys wanna learn about the financial risks behind buying a 2021 Subaru WRX or STI and not the newest generation, stick through and watch the video because we're gonna discuss why you could lose a ton of money by buying a 2021 or 2020 or anything that isn't the next generation WRX and maybe one of the reasons that you should wait for the next generation. And we're gonna talk about the pros and cons and what could actually happen to your wallet if you make that decision or you pull the trigger. And I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering, is it gonna be a good time to buy the 2021 WRX or STI because the new gen newest generation is coming out? I've got a few opinions, but let's talk about some of the big financial risks if you like these financial videos and you want to see more of the financial videos, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to know what I drive, I'll run a quick intro here. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. So there's nothing better than a new generation of a car coming out. And we have tons of examples of this process and what happens financially to these cars from decades and decades of the car industry. And it's a pretty repeatable process. And the same thing happens almost every time. It's starting to change, I will be honest. That financial model is becoming less predictable and things are changing. And the car, the sports car world is evolving as we speak. We're seeing cars become more bulletproof and equity. We're seeing less financial risk in buying cars. All these things are changing, so I do wanna caveat this video, but there are some financial risks and you have to be prepared for them. We also have this weirdness around COVID, the Delta variant, what's happening with the market, shortage in parts with the cars. So unfortunately, the newest generation Subaru WRX and STI is a very unique situation and it's unique in a very bad way. Let's talk for a second about a non-COVID world with new generation cars. This is a great opportunity to buy the most the current generation when the new generation is coming out, typically when the new generation is actually hitting the lots because you're seeing some of the best deals on the previous generation. So if that's the car you wanted, you're gonna get the best deal for it. What's really important to understand there is that cars are going to be hitting the lot at that point and that there's going to be an influx of new generation vehicles that are gonna make dealers more money and the manufacturers can be pushing and giving incentives to sell the newest generation. And the old generation is gonna be more about clearing inventory. But what, what, what's unique about our current situation with COVID is we don't have this massive inventory of older generation cars. So it's actually hard to get your hands on a 2015 through 2021 Subaru WRX or STI right now. So the odds of these big deals happening during this time frame and in this period is probably pretty low. Now I'm not saying it's not gonna happen and it probably will happen, but we won't really see that happen until the newest generation WRXs and STIs are physically hitting the lots and that they uh, these lots are having uh, tons of inventory. So if something, unless something serious changes with COVID-19, the market and what's going on, you're not gonna see this change happen. And I, I, I hesitate towards saying that there are gonna be massive deals. What I actually think is gonna happen is we're gonna see the newest generation get released and that it's just gonna become this mess of pre-ordering. There's, there's not gonna be a positive amount of cars on the lots and it's just gonna be a mess. But what does that mean for you guys financially? So what financial risk are you actually taking by buying the 2021 or older WRX or STI when the newest generation is about to hit the market? So what we know from past situations, whenever cars are released, when the newest generation comes out, the old generation takes a dip in value. That's because they're not being sold anymore. They're not being supported. The general market, you know, the not car person market that likes one specific car is not buying them anymore. They're becoming a used asset. The values are tanking and overall the value of that car and generation goes down. We know this, we've seen this happen. This isn't gonna change. This is constantly gonna happen. And this is probably gonna happen for a long time in the future. Previously, that drop in value was pretty large and something that was super predictable. And that's why we saw these massive deals from dealers because I knew that that depreciation was gonna happen. But let's say you're in the situation and you're going out to buy a 2021 WRX or STI, a, definitely a car that doesn't depreciate at the same rate of other cars. 
again, what is the financial risk for you? Well, the financial risk is that when the newest generation WRX and STI come out, you're gonna see a big percentage of depreciation on your car pretty much immediately. Now, what's important to understand is if you're smart about vehicles and how to balance the equity and ride the equity and control the equity on your car and make sure that you always have positive equity in a car and you're not losing money. I guess it's hard to make money with cars, a little bit less hard to keep equity in the car and not lose money and then it's easy to lose money on cars. So I guess what I'm saying is if you are worried about losing some of the equity in your car and that is something of concern, you better watch out because when the newest generation WRX or STI come out, I can't tell you if it's going to be 5%, 20%, 30%, but it's going to be more, it's going to be a tangible depreciation in value. You also have to understand that this whole market, this whole community is going to shift to liking a new car and the people that are going to buy this generation car become only enthusiasts and that only that sentiment only becomes larger as time goes by. So you need to be careful and understand that your car, while it's, easily, it's easy to sell now, is not gonna be as easy to sell. So one of the things that we all appreciate about this car especially is when you buy it, you can then sell it for not that much money lost and there's always somebody looking for them and there's tons of buyers and it's easy to move these cars. What could end up happening is you could keep this car, take a hit on the money, and then have a hard time selling it, which is not where you want to be. I guess when I say financial risks, it's a financial risk, singular. And what you're trying to hedge against is this big depreciation in the value of your car when the new generation comes out. And, you know, I've done some research and I've looked at lots of other brands. I've looked at previous releases of the WRX and STI and changes in generation. And my guess is that we're going to see between a 10 and 20% depreciation 12 months after the release. So 12 months after the newest generation hits car, hits the lots and dealers have full inventory, my guess is that 12 months after that point, we're gonna feel the depreciation of this generation, the VA generation, on the cars. The market will then realize that depreciation and we're gonna feel it. So I guess the thing to understand is, and I'll discuss this in a video, is I'm not making a comment right now whether or not you should buy the 2021 WRX or younger because there's definitely ways to hedge against this depreciation and you probably can own the car for the first year, which is something that I actually plan on doing before the new generation comes into my garage. But understand that if you keep this car into 20, end of 2022, you should expect for that market correction and that market's gonna correction is gonna come in a form of less buyers, so more used inventory with less people, meaning the value then goes down. So it's not just like, boom, it's 20% less. The way that it actually happens is that your volume of cars to the, your volume of consumers, that percentage, that ratio changes, and all of a sudden it's easier to get these cars, you get to make more offers because you've got sellers more desperate to, to sell the car, and then the average sale price goes down, and you guys see exactly what I'm talking about. That's how these cars lose value. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I know I just talked a lot about how the finance of these cars work and a little bit about what's happening. I will have another video that's separate to this so you guys aren't watching me talk for like 20 minutes about what I plan on doing because I know if you watch the channel, you understand that I'm looking for a 2021 STI and I'm looking to add a new, new generation STI or WRX onto this channel as well. So I'll talk a little bit about what my personal plans are, but I just wanted to make this video so that you guys can understand that there are financial risks behind buying cars because for some reason, if you look at the comment section of my videos and you look at other people in this marketplace, that's not something that is commonly known, which seems crazy and it seems like someone needs to tell everyone that you can lose a lot of money buying cars. And that's what it's designed, that, that's why it's like, a huge industry and it's billions and billions of dollars a year actually it's way more than that but you guys know what i mean the point that i'm making is there are a lot of risks in these cars even though they're considered bulletproof in equity and that there is going to be a big correction so you're going to see a lot of consumers that are going out and ordering these 2021 wrx's that intend on keeping them for three or four years they're going to take a hit whether they like it or not unless they sell that sell their cars before this happens they're going to take a hit and they're going to feel that because with such an expensive car that 10 20 30 percent is a bigger number i mean it's simple math right so be careful be an educated buyer hopefully you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching